Hi, my name is Thomas Foster and this is a tutorial for Ableton Live 10 or Ableton Live 10.1. This tutorial is just right for you when you try to produce music for the first time in your life or even if you come from another program like Cubase or Logic and you want to switch to Ableton Live. When you open Ableton Live for the first time, it probably looks like this. Let's take a look at the window on how Ableton is constructed. Up here we have the transport buttons, play, stop and record. If you click now the play button, you see immediately how the playback starts and here the arrangement position shows the bass, beats and the 16th of a bar. Of course you can hear the two, for this you have to click this button with these two points here uh, called the metronome. Okay, how fast your song runs, you set here with the tempo in beats per minute. If you rather want to produce a chill track or a ballad, then probably 90 BPM is a good tempo. To produce a club track like house or techno, 125 could be a good tempo. And if you want to produce speed metal, you could go up to, oh, let's say, 299 BPM. <laughs> okay, no, I want to produce a more or less uh, pop dance track and for this I would say 120 is a good tempo. Yeah, sounds great. Here in the middle is the main window for which there are two different views which you can switch here with these buttons. The session view and the arrangement view. Session view has many advantages, especially if you are in a live situation, let's say on stage. But let's start with the arrangement view. In the arrangement view, the time runs from the left side to the right side. Just stop the metronome, we don't need this in the moment. And you should see four tracks, two MIDI tracks and two audio tracks. If you do not see MIDI tracks, you can create a new one here in the create menu with the command insert midi track okay on the left side is the browser if you do not see the browser you can open and close it with this arrow here uh, on the left window of the browser we have the categories like sounds drums instruments audio effects if you click now on drums you see all drum racks installed on your computer to hear how they sound, you just click them and then an additional click on this little headphone icon here. And then you get a demo how this would sound. Okay, I would like to load the kit 909 Classic ADG. To find it faster, I type here in the search field 909. Good, here is it, the kit 909 Classic ADG. Now pull your drum rack on the first MIDI track. If you have a keyboard connected, you should be able to play the drum sounds now via your keyboard. If you don't have a keyboard, don't worry, you also can click this little arrows here to hear the sounds. Uh, if you don't, do not see this, please double click your MIDI track, then you should see this. Before we come to the fun part, uh, let's set the volume of this track here with this blue, in this blue field to minus 2 dB to avoid any distortion problems. To program a beat, we first need an empty clip. To create this, you have to make a selection of exactly one bar on this track. You may need to zoom in or out to select exactly one bar. To do this, click here in the dark gray arrow and drag down with the mouse to zoom in or up to zoom out. Alternatively, you can do this with plus and minus on your keyboard. Now make a selection on the first track which starts exactly on bar 5 and ends at bar 6. To create a new MIDI clip, right click or control click on your selection and go to the function insert MIDI clip. Okay, this here is the piano roll. We see exactly one bar. For me this bar is now divided into 30 
two steps from left to right. To change this, let's right click or control click here this gray number and change it to 16th. I just have to change it, then you see what's happening. We go now to 16th. Now you should see 16 fills from left to right. We want to program a 4 to the floor beat. For this, we set the kick. You have to change this maybe here to see the kick. We set the kick on the 1, on the 1.2, on the 1.3 and the 1.4. So every quarter of our bar. To hear that, click on the play button up here and then the stop button. Or better, click on the space key on your keyboard to start playing and a second time to pause again. Great. Let's put the snare at the 1.2 and 1.4 and in the same place also the clap. Now we missed the closed hi-hat, which we put on the off beats. Means at the 113, the 123, the 133 and the 1.4.3. Now let's listen to this. Ooh, great, I like that. To make the beat even more interesting, we add a so-called ghost note. A snare a sixteenth before the third kick. So one, two, three, one sixteenth back. Here's the snare. Let's listen to this. Great, but this snare should be only a small color, so it's clearly too loud. To reduce the volume a bit, we can edit the velocity down here. Okay, let's listen to this. Much better. But we do not just want to make one bar of music, we want to make at least 16 bars. To do this, we zoom out a little bit and then we go with the mouse to the upper right corner of this clip. So we get this special icon here for the mouse. And now we make it 4, 8, 12, 16 bars from bar 5 to bar 21. If you play this now, you will hear the full 16 bars of this beat in a loop. Next, we want to put a crash at the beginning of every 8 bars group. To do this, we go back to the browser on drums and open this time with this little arrow, the drum hits and then the kimbles. I write 909 up here in the search field again to find the crash 909 AIF. Now double click on the second MIDI track and drag the crash into the window where drop an instrument or sample here is written. Now uh, let's create an empty clip on our new track which starts exactly at bar 5. This time you can use the keyboard command shift command M or on PC shift control M. In the piano roll we make a double click on the C3 and now we pull the note over the entire bar. Let's listen to this. Okay, the crash is still a little bit too loud so we bring down the level here to minus 7. Cool. In the music, everything is usually divided into 4, 8 or 16 bars. So we repeat our crash after 8 bars. That means on bar 13. Let's listen to this. At the end of an 8 bar group, it's always a good idea to make a small break. To do this, we select exactly the last bar before the second crash. So from 12 to 13. Now right click or control click the selection and find the command split or alternatively you can use the command command E on your computer keyboard. Now in this bar here we erase the kick 2, 3 and 4 with the backspace key on your keyboard. Now let's listen to the break. Great. So if this sounds like this at your computer, I say congratulations. You have just programmed your first beat in Ableton Live. How cool is that? 
My name is Thomas Foster and this is my YouTube or Facebook channel Thomas Foster Music Production where you will find everything about the topic music production. If you have any questions about this tutorial or about Ableton Live 10, just write in the comments. I will answer everything. This video is indeed the first on this channel, so you can imagine how much I would like to have a like, a comment or a subscription. Above all, you should leave me a subscription with a click on the bell to not miss the next episode to this Ableton Live 10 tutorial. At that point, I say thanks for being there and always stay creative. Cheers!